This story is not for the faint of heart. If you cannot sit in the midst of burning hatred, flames flickering to set you ablaze, you understand cannot understand this tale. This tale. Cannot... These words are not filtered. This story is not a fable. A fable. Not. Oh my gosh, best thing that's happened at this school so far. My favorite part. This is the most amazing experience. I've never like seen someone come up from something so horrible, horrible and then like just to see someone so proud and like present themselves as who they are and show everyone like just this like a representation of just them as a person it's like amazing I just loved it. My story is not uh, it's not singular my story is just one of many stories that, that are out there, that people don't tell themselves, that people don't talk about. Yeah, because you got my speech, so don't. <laughs> Can't go. So there's a separate administration wing. Amazing. kids walking in to school and it's just like a flashback and they looked happy. <laughs> heard the NPR story and just started listening to him about how he, uh, what his thoughts were about West High School and what it was when he was growing up and those kinds of things and knew that that was not the West High School of today um, and just decided to reach out and just to kind of talk to him a little bit about West High School and what it is about um, the things that make us so special. We are a very diverse school and so I wanted him to know that and our motto is One West and how um, it takes all of our diverse, uh, diversity and kind of puts us into a united front and I wanted him to hear that and so um, just in conversation started talking to him about, about that and then eventually just invited him to come. integrated West High School. It was a hard time back then, 50 years ago. Uh, he and his uh, friends who came, it was very difficult for him. It was a different time in Knoxville. It was a different time at West High School. And yet, uh, he survived and he thrived, actually. And that's what I think his story is so, uh, what his story is so wonderful. He went into medicine, he has taught, he has been a dean, uh, he has chaired surgical um, departments and such, so his accomplishments are really a, a testament to, number one, that we can live through very hard times, and it may be about race, it might be uh, many other types of um, situations where you feel victimized, but yet if you uh, put your mind to it and you have friends around you who will support you, then you can really thrive. The first day of school was uh, was different. We got out of the cars. All the students were out, were in front of the school, or at least the majority of them, standing in front of the school. And some of the football players actually came out and said, "Let me show you where your classes are." The principal requested that he meet with all the uh, black students. He was calling the roll. So he said, Bill Weaver. And I said, my name is William Weaver. And he said, oh, you're a smart ass in word. He suspended me. First day of school. I've been in school maybe 30 minutes. 
and that was the beginning of, of what I, I realized was going to be a long three years. He was certain that once he left here, he would never return. But when he heard that West has become a very different place, that you're different, you're a different student body, he graciously agreed to come back and visit us and spend today sharing and learning his journey with us. At this time, please help me welcome home to West High School, Dr. William Lee. I've never seen an F before. It destroyed my psyche. And uh, then I felt, well, maybe I'm just dumb and I don't belong. And then Mr. Hill knocks on my door again. And he says, I heard you're having trouble at West. But I didn't tell him. I don't know who told me what was going on. I said, every day after West High School, I would go back to Bristol Junior High School. He would have assorted teachers there in the tutor me. And once I passed the semester, I realized that people are not smarter than me. But I can't remember a day where a teacher at West High School smiled at me, said, good morning, how are you doing? I, I, I try to think of the good things, and it's very hard to think of what the good things were. What I struggle with and what I can't answer is why did I stay? That's the question I ask my classmates now who stayed there with me. And they have various reasons. Uh, but when I reflect on it, I don't think any of it is really good enough to explain why we stay. Nobody wants you around. Get out. Why are you? You don't belong. You're not good at geology. And practice where? Where you practice? Well, we practice right behind, okay. behind here where I showed you the practice field. Now, next year, we'll probably spend a lot of time practicing on the turf. You have to worry about running it out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You have a separate room for your, your cleats? Uh, we we are just we we include the cleats in the players package and so they have their own. Oh, they cleats. get a pl a package. Yeah, with t-shirts, warm ups, uh, shorts. <laughs> Didn't you get cleats though? I got cleats, but that's it. <laughs> I got cleats. <laughs> There's no such thing as a pack. The, the jerseys have to be tight, huh? Yeah. So everybody's got a tight jersey. Everybody's jersey's tight. You know. That's tough on the lineman, tough on the lineman. <laughs> oh yes, there it is. There you go. That's it. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, that's an old nasty practice field. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody stepped on my heel or something, I fell. And uh, it felt like the whole damn team ran over me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm laying there and I'm trying to act like, I said, well, act like I'm hurt. So I don't have to run these laps. I said, oh, and I look over, I see my wrist hanging, I said, oh, I got hurt. <laughs> A series of audio interviews broadcast on National Public Radio and archived at the Library of Congress. And whereas Dr. William Lynn Weaver's invaluable perspective as a young African-American integrating not just into 1964 has made an indelible mark on us and compels us to hear his words, that's that's what evil depends on, good people to be quiet. 
Now, therefore, I, Madeline O'Hara, mayor of the city of Knoxville, Tennessee, do hereby proclaim March 27, 2018, to be Dr. William Lynn Weaver Day in our city and ask all citizens to join us in this observance. school, I can't remember which one it was, but uh, they had a uh, tight end who was a, a, a significant part of their offense. My brother hit him, and uh, you know, when he hit him and went down, he broke his collarbone. My brother pointed at him and said, I told you not to come through here, I told you. We're standing on the visiting sideline next to a fence. And from the home side, people are running on to the field, coming out on the field. I'm thinking that, you know, we're gonna get killed. I'm standing against the fence and my, I feel somebody grab my shoulder pads and I turn around and it's my father. I turned to my brother and I said, it's all right, Dad, sir. As I'm getting on the bus, on the steps, I look back and I see my father. And as we drive away, I look back with my brother, and I said, how's dad going to get out of here? And he said, I don't know. So we get to the school. My father walks through the door at the gym. He says, are you ready to go? And we asked him, he said, dad, how'd you get out of there? He said, oh, I just got in my car and drove out. It's no problem. I, I think the most important piece of my life was my father. He helped me through West. He helped me get through that a, a difficult time many times at West. I've, I've spent 50 years hating West High School. And it has not allowed me to recognize the good things I got from West High School. And I did get some good things. I got a great education. The A I got in chemistry in college. I got those principles from West High School. The English that I got an A at in college. Those principles I got from West High School. So there were some good things that, that I ignored or actually refuse to even give credence to uh, from West High School. So I, I think if I can bury those demons, then I'll be able to fully appreciate the good things about West, as well as its faults. Uh, so we'll see. I never told my parents what was going on because I was afraid for my parents. I knew that if, my, if I told my father some of the things that the teacher said to me, or treated me, that my father would come to defend me. Then that meant that he would go to jail, he would lose his job, he made me kill him. So I never told him. The only time he intervened was when he found out that the football coach was mistreated. He came then. My mother, I, 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 my mother never came to West High School. My mother was a very prominent part of my life growing up in elementary and junior high school. She was always there, but she never set foot in West High School. She came to one football game in the stadium. Uh, that was this, my senior year homecoming game. That's the only game she ever came to. But she never set foot in West High School because she felt unwelcome and uncomfortable. And I never told her because I knew that would put her in a bad situation. One, am I going to go defend my son? And if she did that, then she would not have a job or she could be arrested. So I never told her, so she never came. Uh, so that's the, the double-edged sword for what you put children in. 
it's a no-win situation. Because you want to tell somebody, you want somebody to protect you, but you're afraid if you do, you could lose your parent. And, and that's the situation we've had. And I think if you talk to all the guys who are here, we've had this conversation before, they'll tell you the same thing. It was very hard for many, many years. He harbored a resentment about his experience here. Not everybody, not every. He said a, you know, a lot of people were good, but particularly some of the teachers. And to, for him to come back and to meet the teachers and meet the students and see that West High School is about being one West, that it is about being diverse and inclusive in so many different ways. Um, that's what it's known for. West is known for that. So I know it was a very, um, good feeling for him to be able to come back and to see the change and to be able to share his story because unfortunately even though it has changed in many ways we know as he said there's still uh, there's still prejudice out there there's still bullying there's still different things uh, unfortunately we still mistreat one another and so hopefully his story will help people check themselves and think about how they can reach out to someone who might be feeling bad, who might be victimized, and make their life better. So, um, on behalf of West High School, we would love to present you this custom jersey, and thank you for coming back. My new certainly worse when I was here. Uh, it's a lot better now. I don't know if I had it to do over again. I would have stayed. I think things worked out in my life for me, but I don't know if I would do it again. I, mean, I, I don't know if I'd do it again. But I'm glad I came back. Mm -hmm. I'm glad I was, uh, this is, it's, it's different. No. Dr. Weaver's going to end us for the day in the way that I love, and he's, he's giving it out now, and he's got that twang now. We are. I thought it was pretty amazing. Yourself heard, make yourself known, and don't accept the status quo.